nobody is answering the phone at reception and um, nobody's answering the emergency mobile number for the site we've run up head office and they're not even aware there's a problem so they're, so they're going to send somebody out um, but he is uh, not coping at all and I think the most likely outcome at the moment is that we're going to have to get him home Merry Christmas boys and girls and being Christmas means just one thing we are back for our now traditional Christmas stay at Forest Holidays. The cabin is behind me. You can see we've learned from previous mistakes. We have fairy lights to keep our hot tub illuminated. We actually arrived last night. I'm not going to do a cabin tour this time because we're staying in the same cabin we've stayed in several times before. So if you want to see what the cabins are like, I'll link to some videos down below where we've given you a tour of those. It's actually our first morning here. We arrived last night. The hot tub wasn't even warm yet. We haven't even been in it yet, but we are here now. You can see our Christmas tree is up. There was a selection of people there in the living room. Anna, Andy, Short Stay are all here. Unfortunately, the girl's not able to make it because selfishly, they believe going to things like university and college takes precedent over coming for a pre-Christmas trip here at Forest Holidays. But we have decided to have a full on Christmas week. We've got our afternoon tea coming up, the snowman and the snow dog afternoon tea. We've got all the elements we need to have a Christmas dinner here. We're gonna be doing some of the activities on site. We've even got a Christmassy themed picky tea, including a ham. We are going full Christmas, board games are plenty, shenanigans, lots of fun. But first, I'm supposed to be in there making a fried breakfast, so I'm gonna go and do that, and then we'll check in with you a little bit later on today. Unfortunately, with it being our first morning, it is raining outside, so we can't really go out on adventures at the moment. I think this is the only day this week it's due to be raining, but we've decided lazy morning before we head off and uh, do our, I wanna say teddy bears picnic, it's not that at all. It's indoors, afternoon tea, snowman and snow dog afternoon tea. So we've got Andy just watching TV over there somewhere. Um, Anna is upstairs doing various potions and things on her face. And I'm just pottering around looking for something to do. Probably gonna crack out the steam deck in a minute, but the next time we see you, we should be over at the retreat doing snowman related things. Trying to mobilize this lot to go out is an absolute nightmare. Look at our pretty little fairy lights we brought with us. Aren't they pretty? I'll try and remember to show you them in the dark because they are super duper pretty. I'll tell you what, the weather, now the rain has stopped, it's absolutely lovely. Look at that. What a lovely, pretty place. This is why we keep coming back here. We're going in the car. We are going to go in the car, yes. Where are we going? To go dinner. We are going to go and have some dinner. Snowman, afternoon tea. Snowman and the oh snow God. dog. So that's where we're heading for our afternoon tea, the forest retreat. Our cabin is about as far away as you can get on the resort, so we had to drive here because uh, certain people are either broken or unwilling to walk long distances. Andy, don't walk straight through the mud. <laughs> Goodness me. But yeah, it's up there for the forest retreat and it's lovely. We've done this the last couple of years. It's all lovely and snowman and the snow dog themed, which is great. So this is our delicious looking little spread complete with snowman and snow dog themed paraphernalia. Um, Andy's struggling a little bit because we had to wait 15 minutes. So he's just having a moment over there and deciding if he wants to join us. But food looks good. Andy's got his own little portion over there as well, which he probably won't eat, but it's there. Well, that was kind of a disaster. There was a mix up with the bookings, so they weren't expecting us, even though we pre-booked and prepaid and uh, it took about 15 minutes for them to get everything set up ready for us and he could not cope at all with the 15 minute break uh 15 minute wait and uh yeah absolute disaster we've got most of it to bring away with us we managed to get him to sit down long enough for Anna to drink a cup of tea she's eaten no food i've stuffed a couple of scones in me but considering how much that afternoon tea costs it's not gone well it's not there for other than the fact that they got the booking mixed up it's not their fault, the servers and everything was fine. It's just Andy is not built for waiting. And uh, yeah, not ideal. I think that's the last time he's gonna leave the cabin over the course of the week. He's not interested in doing any of the activities. He just wants to use the hot tub and hang out in the cabin. So I think that's his plan. I've got some activities planned. Me and Shortstay are gonna go and do some stuff tomorrow. But for now, I think we'll head back to the cabin, jump in a hot tub 
and pretend none of that happened because it was a disaster. It's hot tub o'clock and because it's not completely dark yet, no one else has come in. But I tell you what, this is the perfect time to be in here because you can just see the sun starting to go down over there. And we've got all our awesome fairy lights, which were the most genius idea ever. Bringing them with us, some outdoor waterproof fairy lights. I am a genius, but I am just going to enjoy showing you my bunion, apparently, and sitting in this hot tub as the sun goes down. Don't even have to worry about doing any dinner today because we, uh, we had our afternoon tea at like two o'clock. It's not even four o'clock now. The sun is due to go down. Um, apparently the sun is officially set, according to my watch. It's not completely, but it is. It's getting there. Oh, it's, I tell you what, if anything, it's too hot in this hot tub. It's very, very warm. My excellent hot tub time has been completed. So now I'm trying to put together a Christmas buffet that Dave can't get to, which is a problem because this is the table. This is the kitchen. There's just, there's no way to lock him out of the kitchen. So we can't like cover the table in buffet food because Dave will just jump on the table, eat everything and then lie on his back with a big smile on his face. So I'm trying to kind of put it together on the side here in the kitchen, whilst also battling with the fact that it's a tiny area. And of course we didn't have any normal stuff from home. So this is stuff we've just bought from Tesco. So it's not like homemade sausage rolls and stuff like that, but we have a selection. There are some freezer picky bits in the oven right now, but this is what we're working with. As you can see, we have an entire ham, which I can use to control Dave. This is great. We come around to Dave. Hey, Dave, look what I've got. Look, it's a ham. Oh, Andy, by the way, absolutely spark out because he took his medicine when he was in the uh, in the retreat earlier we had no choice but to give it to him because he was not cooperating at all but it does mean he will just be asleep for the rest of the day now but yeah i can control dave with this ham which is excellent stuff um, but the rest of what we've got various sausages and dips and crackers and cheeses and things and we just need to make sure that this animal doesn't get at it the other problem i'm working with is the absolute total lack of any kind of light in this place they don't have lights in the ceilings. They just have the, the odd spotlight here and there, obviously to keep it cozy. But what that means is it's really hard to vlog. So I've had to set up a big lamp so you can actually see what I'm doing because otherwise the camera won't pick it up very well at all. Um, and Anna has discovered that this lamp is called Tiny Kevin because she was trying to att attach her headphones to her PlayStation and there was an accessory that came up called Tiny Kevin. We turned everything off that we could think of. And the only thing that made tiny Kevin go away was when I turned off the lamp. So at some point in the past, I've named that lamp tiny Kevin. So tiny Kevin is helping me prepare dinner, which is super duper. There you go. Now it's a proper British Christmas buffet. I've added a load of beige things to go with the yellowy browny beige things we've already got. Christmas buffet. Well, it is now Wednesday morning, so the midway point of our week. Wednesday is officially activity day. It wasn't deliberately all the activities today. We asked for air rifle shooting today and archery tomorrow, and we've gotten back to back. We're doing one at 10 a.m., one at 11.30 a.m., so we're wandering down to the retreat now. Me and Short Stay are gonna beat him twice because I am great, and he is going to lose. But uh, yeah, we'll head down, get involved in them. And then I think the plan for this afternoon, bit of a lazy one. This is when we're gonna do our Christmas dinner and really make use of that hot tub. But first I need a couple of victories. So we're gonna go and do that now. Competition one complete. Um, I beat him 34 to 35. No, you didn't. I won, I won. I won. I won. He got a higher score, but I won <laughs> because <laughs> reads because it's my video so I won um, we're just having a little half time break for a uh, smart water before we head back out for archery where I'm going to beat he was always going to beat me with guns he's from Nottingham um, <laughs> I'm going to beat him with a bow and arrow because I watched a lot of arrow I'm from Nottingham uh, here we go then straight down the middle. Look at these two. Look at him. 
What an arrower. Look at that. I am, I, I'm, I'm the greatest arrower ever. Before you worry that I'm a natural, this is the fourth time I've come to one of these places and done the beginner's archery. Sooner or later, I might have to progress to intermediary. Well, folks, off the back of that, I can fairly confidently declare I am the finest archer Sherwood Forest has ever seen. That was uh, a wonderful experience. Will officially declare me champion of the morning. <laughs> See, he's not arguing. Now we've got to buy some milk. I had been planning on getting started making our Christmas dinner, uh, but Andy decided we were having daytime hot tub. All four of us are in it currently. And as you can see, it is overflowing. I am up to my neck in it. I'm sat oh. on the bottom. I can't even see the buttons to control it. Oh, it's, uh, it's quite deep when everyone's in it, but it is quarter past three. The sun goes down in an hour. So just like yesterday, fingers crossed, we get to have the really cool sun going down over here, which is a very pleasant view to see the sun going down whilst in the hot tub over the top of our fairy lights. Hello over there. Hello. Are we all all right? Yeah. yeah. We're all enjoying being hot and tubby. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I would like it on record that it's quite challenging assembling a full roast dinner in an unfamiliar kitchen that doesn't quite have all the stuff you need and a tiny oven, but we're getting there. We have a table set, we have stuff being cooked, we have the usual terrible lighting that we have in this place, and fingers crossed, in about 20 minutes time, we'll have something approximating a Christmas dinner, although it is pork, not turkey, because, I mean, look at the size of this oven. That, that would fit the turkey and nothing else, so pork will be fine. And without wanting to be too controversial, anyone with taste buds will agree, Pork's better than turkey anyway. And there we have my approximation of a Christmas dinner cooked no. in a little cabin. There is some pork at the back there. These are store-made roast potatoes, not the best in the world, but most of your main components are there. We've even got crackling, or again, an idea of crackling. Not familiar with this oven. Looks like it should be acceptable though. Of course, Dave got his fair share of roast dinner as well, and is now sat on his, he's brought his pillow there, so he can sit on that pillow on the entrance of the kitchen, partly watching us clear up afterwards, and partly just biding his time to see if anything falls on the floor, because he is a monster. Yeah, I know what you're planning, you little rascal. I do want it on record as well. One of my favorite things about forest holidays is uh, glass milk bottles. We have got another one from the shop today. It just tastes better. Got my party hat on for my cracker, and with a full day and a morning still to go, we are slowly but surely working our way through our ridiculously expensive shopping trip that we had to Tesco at the start of the week. We've still got some leftovers from the afternoon tea at the back there, but we've got a few bits for it. I think we're planning on having a barbecue tomorrow, although it is apparently going to be very windy, but even if we can't properly barbecue, we've basically got sausages and burgers and we've still got loads of leftover little party foods. So I think we'll... Uh, think we'll be all right. We'll survive. We're probably not going to starve to death. Um, they didn't have any alcohol-free Guinness in the shop we went to, so I've had to make do with Heineken. It just doesn't get the job done the same way. I might steal one of Anna's Coronas. Well, it's Thursday morning, our last full day here, um, and we've been woken up by a power cut. Um, well, I've been woken up by a power cut. Andy was already up. He was watching the snowman on the TV. The power's gone out, and uh, as you can imagine, he's not coped with that very well at all. Um, it's been out for like 20 minutes, half an hour. Nobody is answering the phone at reception. Um, nobody's answering the emergency mobile number for the site. We've run up head office and they're not even aware there's a problem, so they've said they're going to send somebody out. Um, but he is uh, not coping at all. And I think the most likely outcome at the moment is that we're going to have to get him home, even though there's a weather warning for wind. We know why the power's gone out. We had a weather warning. Um, come through last night that there was strong winds. We've been advised not to go outside and walk around the resort because of all the trees and the danger. So it's a pretty dangerous route home. We can't actually leave Andy alone long enough at the moment for us to pack and all leave. So I think unless it comes back on soon, we're going to have to get him home whilst leaving all our stuff here and then get back here either tonight or tomorrow morning to pack our stuff and then leave properly. Um, 
Unless it comes back on. He's had his medicine, so he's now in bed. Anna's trying to comfort him and calm him down. Um, so he might just go back to sleep. Usually when he takes his medicine, it does kind of knock him out for the day. But he only had it two days ago when we had the issue at the uh, at the afternoon tea. So he's not had a very good break at all because we've had we get three full days here. And this is two of the full days he'll spend sleeping or really stressed out because of stuff that's gone wrong. I get it's nobody's fault, but... This really has been a disaster trip so far. Um, we got delivered the wrong food when we got... Oh, the power's back on, possibly. It did this a minute ago. Our fairy lights have just... That's the second time it's come back on for like five seconds and then gone off again. Um, hmm. It's been a disaster trip. Fingers crossed it comes back on soon. Well, it's now 10.30, so about two hours after the power first went out. We've finally started making some contact, or they've started making some contact with us. I've spoken to someone at head office on the phone. Um, I've spoken to someone in Instagram DMs. They're all giving me the same, we don't really know what's going on message, but we, I sent a text through to the emergency out of hours number, which apparently goes to housekeeping, because housekeeping have just knocked on the door and said they don't really know what's going on either. So she is now heading over to reception. She's gonna find out what's going on and come back and let us know. What she does know is the fire brigade are here. What's up the door? And it was pretty much chaos from that point on. Didn't get to film anymore because we were too busy getting out of there. That actual knock on the door was housekeeping coming back saying they'd been to reception who had confirmed a tree had fallen down on a power line. The fire brigade were there trying to remove the tree, but they didn't know if and when power would be coming back on. So any guests who didn't want to wait it out had the option of checking out a day early to get 25% of the money that they paid on the trip back. So we figured we'd probably do that. We started packing up. We were actually able to leave Andy alone while we did that because he'd gone back to sleep because of his medication. So we started packing up. And as we were packing up, we got another knock on the door, this time from two members of the reception team rather than housekeeping who said it had escalated even further and they were actually now evacuating the entire site. There was no longer a decision to be made. Everybody had to leave. Uh, not only did we have to leave, we would have to go out via a side entrance because the front entrance was too dangerous to leave by. And apparently the people who were on the front end of the park were really not having a nice time at all. They were they were, they were, were under genuine like threat to life at that end of the park. Um, Ours was less so. We were only really affected by having our electricity taken out, but still, we were told we had to get out. We did. We were given the option. We, we were allowed to pack up our stuff. We didn't just have to flee immediately. But they did say, don't worry about cleaning, don't worry about stripping beds, clearing out the freezer, doing the bins, that kind of thing. Just pack up your stuff and get out and get out via the side door, which is not ideal because obviously there is a weather warning. There is a, an advice to not travel. We'd already had advice not to even leave our cabin and now we were having to go back and forth to obviously load up the car and then drive out and get home. But I guess better than staying there and not having any power on. I don't know if and when the power did come back on that day. I do know they took in new guests the next day. So despite evacuating the, the entire site on the Thursday, by the Friday, they were inviting new guests in again. So uh, I guess they got it all sorted out and cleaned up and, and fixed from there. As part of the evacuation, they didn't actually mention any kind of refund as part of that. I said, well, what about the refund? The person who came before said we'd get 25% back if we left. Today. They said, yeah, that's fine. You'll definitely be getting some of your money back. We can't do anything now because the electricity is down on the entire site, which includes the receptions. They have no access to their computer systems, their phone systems, anything like that. Um, so we kind of left it up in the air and didn't get anything hammered out and confirmed as to what the refund actually was. I, I think it probably should be more than a 25% refund. This trip is an expensive trip. It costs about £2,000 for us to have four nights at Forest Holidays. And yeah, we had one night cut off. So straight away, 25%, £500 back. That should be the bare minimum. But there's also a lot of stuff that went on, some of which we touched on in the video, some of which we didn't mention because I was trying to keep the video positive. We've always loved going to forest holidays. We've been there multiple times. It's why we keep going back because we've always loved it. But this time, even from the start, even before the ending that we had there, it just wasn't quite the same. We got there on the Monday. And like I say, none of this was included in the video originally because 
I wanted to keep the video nice and positive, but we got there and the hot tub was stone cold. We actually ended up, after a couple of hours of it just not warming up, get, calling out the engineer who came and drilled the side off of it and banged around with it for a few minutes and said, basically, yeah, the hot tub is fine, it's working. I think they just filled it up with cold water this morning. So presumably they normally fill it up with hot water. I don't really know how it works. He said it increases in temperature at two and a half degrees every hour. So by about 11 o'clock tonight, it should be warm enough to use. We actually tried it at 11 o'clock that night. It wasn't warm enough to use. Um, so when we're paying £500 a night to stay somewhere, and one of the big pulls of staying there is the fact that every cabin gets a hot tub, for the hot tub to be completely unavailable for the first one of those nights to me, means there should be some money back coming there as well because the reason we're there is because of the hot tub and for a quarter of our trip, the hot tub isn't available to us. It's not the only thing that went wrong on the first day. Um, we got there, we went and spent an extraordinary amount of money at Tesco, a lot of which, the stuff that you saw in the fridge towards the end of those clips, we ended up having to leave there because we couldn't fit it all in the car. It's all well and good saying pack up your stuff and bring it home, but our car was full when we got there. We then dumped our stuff, went to Tesco, bought a load more stuff that we knew we'd consume over the course of the week so there was probably 50 or 60 pounds worth of groceries that we just had to leave there we'd quite like some money back for that too um but we didn't actually get anything to eat on the monday night so after we got there checked in dumped our stuff went to tesco spent too much money came back unpacked it all we decided to order a takeaway on the site something we've done before we've always enjoyed and um, we ordered the takeaway these takeaways are expensive um for a meal for me anna and short stay it was around about 60 to 70 pounds um for pizza and burgers and i think anna had a curry um but Although it's expensive, it's convenient, it's quite nice. We, we tend to do it. Um, but the food arrived and it was the wrong order. We got completely the wrong order. We ordered a pizza for me, a burger for short stay and a curry for Anna. And they delivered my pizza with two chicken burgers. So we tried to ring reception to get it changed because it all comes in bags. We didn't know it was wrong when they brought it in. It wasn't until we started unpacking it all. Uh, reception was, it was impossible to get through. I dialed, and I actually, I talked about this on stream the other day and actually checked on my phone. I did over 200 missed calls to their reception trying to get hold of them, and it was just constantly engaged, presumably because all the other people who got the wrong orders delivered to them were also trying to ring them, I guess. It wasn't that they weren't answering, it's just it wasn't connecting. Um, eventually got through to them after 25 minutes, half an hour probably the food is stone cold at this point and um they i went through what we'd been delivered compared to what we ordered and they said okay we'll come and pick that up and give you your food and i was like you're you're picking it up it's it's stone cold yeah we'll, we'll come and pick it up you've not started eating it have you well we've eaten the pizza i've eaten the pizza because the pizza was right the bits that the bits that were wrong, obviously we've not eaten, but we've taken them out of the box. We've checked what they were. We've we've touched the food, basically. But no, they're going to pick it up. So another 15, 20 minutes passed. We get a knock on the door and they came to collect our food and then hand us a bag with the correct stuff in. So Anna's curry and short stays burger, all of which was stone cold. And I didn't want to press it at the time. I and I, I don't know that this is what actually happened, but I have a horrible feeling that they just went to the cabin that had our food and collected it and brought it to us. So the food that had been sat there for half an hour getting cold while someone else did what I did, opened it up, had a look. Oh, that's wrong. No, that's definitely chicken, not beef. Poking it, touching it, might have a chip. I think it just got picked up from someone else's cabin and brought to us. And then they took our food and probably took it to where that was supposed to be. And I'd touched it. And I told them that on the phone. But it definitely felt like the food was just being swapped over because the food that they brought over in place was stone cold. Um, like I say, 60 or 70 pounds for that takeaway is not ideal. We then um, we then got everything that happened on Tuesday, which we kind of glossed over in the video, but it was a disaster. When we first arrived on Monday, they confirmed when our afternoon tea would be taking place. We booked it and paid for it in advance. And again, this isn't cheap. It cost nearly £100 extra to do the afternoon tea, which we do because it's Snowman and the Snowdog themed. Andy loves the Snowman and the Snowdog. 
it's the one thing he'll leave the cabin to do while we're there. So we've done it every time we've been at Christmas time. He loves it. Um, so we booked it, paid for it in advance. When we checked in on Monday, they confirmed what time we would like on Tuesday. And I said, two o'clock, please. They wrote it all down. I watched them write it down. I borrowed their pen so I could write it down on the little slip that they gave me. It was all confirmed in for two o'clock. And when we got there at two o'clock, the table was all set for an afternoon tea, but it was set for an afternoon tea that had just finished. Not our afternoon tea. Someone else had been and had an afternoon tea and it had just finished. And I can only assume they've got one set of Snowman and the Snow Dog stuff because they took it all away and then it came back 15 minutes later, I guess, after it had been cleaned. Um, but when we arrived, they didn't. They weren't expecting us. I was like, we're here for our afternoon tea. Oh, do you have it, do you have it booked? Yes, I have it booked. They're checking in a book, like flicking through pages, clearly can't find us. What name is it? Continuing to flick through. Is that for two adults and two kids? No, it's not. No. It's for the four adults you see here. And, uh, um, yeah, they didn't know we were coming. And they just put us on a little side table, which Andy hated. Andy cannot cope with waiting at all. Um, it took a good 15, 20 minutes for them to clear off the previous table. The previous people had left, but they had to clear off the previous table. They only have one table for afternoon teas. And like I say, probably only one set of the Christmassy stuff because they cleared the table. It was out back for ages. I guess they were probably cooking our stuff as well because they weren't expecting us, even though we'd booked and had the time booked. And then it eventually all came back out again. And we were invited to come over to the table but by then Andy was done he had had enough he didn't actually come and sit at the table with us at all Anna was having to deal with him and she gets very anxious and stressed when he's having a meltdown in public as you can imagine so she didn't eat at all either because she was dealing with him um so neither of them ate so that's 50 quid of our 100 quid down the toilet even though we were able to box it up and bring it back with us but you saw it in the fridge we never ate it it was it's food you eat warm and it was cold um me and short stay kind of ate a bit of it really guiltily and then we uh, as soon as we'd realized that andy just wasn't going to cooperate we just had it all packaged up and left so it was another effectively very expensive takeaway that just went straight in the fridge and we didn't eat so that wasn't ideal the activities Touched on it a little bit in the video, um, but when we booked this trip, we booked it to spread the activities out over the course of the week. We had the afternoon tea on Tuesday, and I think we booked um, the air rifles for Wednesday, archery for Thursday. So we had a, a, something to do each day. Um, we got there, and they'd moved the bookings from the days we originally booked them for and put them back to back on the same morning. Um, I don't know if it's because of the weather warning and they knew Thursday was going to be a write-off. I don't know if it's because the guy who does these things decided to only work one day that week who knows um but rather than it being nicely spread out we had to do it all in one morning there was actually a father and son who did the first those two with us as well the air rifles and the archery and i, I heard the kid ask the man are you the, are you the guy who's doing the the axe throwing as well and the guy was like yeah i'll see you in half an hour and so they had all three of their activities back to back to back on the wednesday morning they might have booked it like that originally i can't imagine anybody would though um so they just kind of moved activities that we'd already paid for and picked the days for in advance just moved them and again i'm british i'm autistic i don't have social skills i don't really like to argue so i just kind of went with it i was like okay yeah they gave me this slip, so I saw the time, saw it was wrong, didn't argue, probably should have done, would never. And uh, yeah, so we had to do our activities back to back on the Wednesday morning whilst Anna is having to deal with Andy, who's in a bad mood because he had his medication on the Tuesday afternoon because of the mess up around the afternoon tea, which meant he slept all afternoon Tuesday, all through Tuesday night. And when he wakes up in the morning after his medication, he just doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to cooperate. It leaves him groggy as well. We hate giving it to him. He has it very rarely normally because it knocks him out for a day and then he has another day where he has to recover from being knocked out for a day so he was miserable and i was having to deal with him on our own while me and short stay were out having our prescribed fun at our prescribed time that we had to do then because they'd moved it all the wednesday afternoon was great we made our we made our christmas dinner loved that that was really nice um and then thursday morning as you saw absolute disaster um, Andy was actually watching the snowman and the snow dog with Anna on the Thursday morning while I was having a little bit of a lay-in because I'm a lazy monster um, it was like 8 30 in the morning it wasn't that much of a lay-in but they were watching that and it actually cut out part way through that's what we haven't shown in the video because we don't show stuff like that anymore um, was 
him having a massive meltdown again because his program had gone off. He had to have his medication again. And then we had all of the confusion and mess up around them not answering the phones again, even not answering the emergency mobile number. I get they're not answering the phone at reception if the power is out and that takes their phones out. Fair enough. But they're not answering the emergency mobile. The reason housekeeping came is because I sent a text to the emergency mobile number in the end. When I ran head office, they had no idea what was going on. I said, oh, we'll email them. What use is emailing them? They've got no electricity. Don't email them. Get hold of somebody there and find out what's going on. Because for the first hour and a half of it, we just wanted to know what was happening. Was it only affecting us? Was it affecting everybody? I couldn't leave Anna with Andy because he was having a meltdown. So I couldn't go to the reception and find out what was going on. For all we knew, it was only affecting us. Um, so it took a long time to find out what was actually going on. And then... We get evacuated, which is fair enough. I get that's outside of their control. But we haven't had the refund yet. And I get Christmas has happened in the way I'm recording this on Wednesday morning. So, yes, Christmas has been in there. They have been open and working, though, because they booked people back in again on Friday. So they were there. They were working. They could have rung me. They could have sent me an email. They could have processed the refund. I heard nothing. I've tried to contact them again this morning through the only way they reply, Instagram DMs, and I've not had a reply on there. And, uh, yeah, there's no sign of the 25% refund we've already told we're getting coming back to us. I've asked for a larger refund. I've asked for a, a complete refund. Um, I've had no response from that. Um, there's been no offer of any kind of compensation or refund. And like I say, it's just absolute radio silence from them. And I've spoken to a few people on Twitter because I was tweeting all this as it was happening. And there's a lot of people in the same boat who were basically kicked out into a storm, into a storm that we were told not to travel during, just kicked out into that storm, had to get alternate accommodation for Thursday night, um, have had no contact offering any kind of refund. And it's it's just not okay. This place that we've loved going to for years now i don't know what's gone on and i get the storm is outside of their control but the way they've handled it has been rubbish and all the stuff that went on in the lead up to that is rubbish as well i don't know if they're under new management i don't know if they had staff off sick i don't know what the excuse is because they're not telling me because they're not replying to my messages and they're not contacting me like they told me they would and that's the situation we're in currently we uh we spent a lot of money on a trip we thought we were going to love. It went wrong multiple times. And at the moment, there's no sign of us getting any money back from it, which is super. Merry Christmas, everybody. This video was supposed to end with a nice Christmas meal with all of us getting together on Saturday, um, where the girls, my dad, all came as well. And it was going to be one long, big Christmas video, starting with Forest Holidays going into that Christmas meal. Andy ended up not coming to the Christmas meal because he was so stressed out by what went on earlier in the week. He didn't want to come. Um, so we decided not to film because it wasn't going to be all of us together. It wasn't going to. We already knew by then this video had changed shape completely and was going to become this. He's also said he never wants to go back there again. So a place he's loved and really enjoyed in the past has been completely ruined for him because he's had a week there that was completely ruined. And uh, he didn't come to Christmas dinner because of it as well. So thanks, Forest Holidays. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Sorry that's not been the most positive video in the world, folks, at Christmas time. Um, but it was a pretty rotten week. And sometimes you just have to tell it like it is, even though we did, as you saw in the clips, try and keep a positive spin on it for as much as possible. But I think we'll wrap the video up there. I'm planning on something a little bit more positive and upbeat over the course of the next few days. So keep an eye out for that as well. Um, but for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon.